brothers, ultimately. Right? And there's a story where his brother Solomon is slavery because they can't stand their little punk brother. Right? And he's away from them for years upon years. He's got all this hurt, all this pain right, from his brothers and what they did to him. And all of a sudden, they see him. He sees them. Right? And the initial reaction for Joseph is not, hey, brothers, right? I-, I love you guys. It's, I'm not going to tell them who I am. I'm going to play a game with them. And so he plays a game with them because you can see he's wrestling with, do I seek revenge on them? What do I do with these guys? What do I do with this hurt? And then ultimately you see the brothers manipulating their brother Joseph by saying their dad told them on their deathbed to tell Joseph to forgive them. And Joseph knows they're lying. And you see Joseph just begin to weep and have this ultimate grief because it's hard to forgive, but yet Joseph is able to forgive them when he says, I know you guys meant this as evil, right? but God, he's been working through this for good. I forgive you, guys. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to comfort you. Right? Forgiveness is hard. Right? When we think about Jesus, was forgiveness hard for him? He went to the cross. Right? Was it hard? Absolutely yes. You see him in, in ultimate uh, discouragement facing that, right? a wrestling nature, all that pain, all that punishment he went through. Right? That was not easy for him. Right? Forgiveness. And today, I want to do this again with you. I want you to try to draw a circle around you and the person next to you. Just do this. I know it's kind of odd. But you can't really do this to the person next to you and this to you at the same time. You can stretch it and try your best. And so what I want to say is, today when we talk about forgiveness, it's about you. Right? It's not about the person next to you, and certainly this message is for each of us, but when we talk about forgiveness, we want so bad for someone to repent to us because ultimately that fixes this relationship. But today is not about repentance. It's not about reconciliation and trust. Right? Today is about not keeping a record of wrong, and that is on us. Not the person next to us, not our neighbor. That's on us, and so we need to own this message and not deflect this message to somebody else. And so love keeps no records of wrongs. When I hear that, I always think of this phrase, don't repeat it, delete it. Right? Delete it. Love keeps no records of wrongs. But what I find myself still struggling with in my life is that I keep the record of wrong in my mind. Right? I don't delete it out of my mind. Right? I think about it, I get consumed by hurt, I start rationalizing the hurt, I just start thinking about it. Right? But what I hear God say is, Justin, don't keep a record of wrong. Right? Don't repeat it in your mind. Delete it. Right? And God's Word actually has a lot to say to us about our, our minds in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and, and what we think about. Paul says this, God says this to us, Finally, brothers, sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I don't hear God saying, think about the hurt and the pain Think about the sin. Right? Think about the good stuff. Right? Joseph, even though it was thousands of, years of er, thousands of years earlier, was able to think about how God was working through that. Right? And so if I'm called to delete it out of my mind, I also hear Paul say, God's word say, take your thoughts captive right? by, your, by his word. Right? And oftentimes, and maybe you're not like me, maybe you're like me in some way when it comes to this, but there's times where I still wake up in the middle of the night and I feel haunted by pain and hurt that has been done to me. And my mind is just consumed with it. And what do I do with that? A tool that I've had in my life is, is I journal and I actually write down or I actually make a list in my head. I journal in my head. Right? All right, Justin, 10 things. Think about 10 things of how God has worked through this situation. Right? And I'm able to take my thoughts captive. And what happens is there is I'm deleting it. I'm deleting that hurt and that pain. I remember somebody said this to me once, Justin, you can either understand or you can have Jesus. You can either have understanding or you can have Jesus. You can either try to rationalize this and and understand what they've done to you, why they did it, how it's never going to happen again, all this stuff, or you can have Jesus, Justin. You can spend time thinking about this or you can just spend time giving this to him and asking him to teach you how to forgive. Right? Paul said, forget what is behind and press on to what is forward. And so may we repeat it from our mind. Right? Don't repeat it, delete it. Because right? love keeps no records of wrongs. Another way you and I 
uh, lived through life, and so I'm going to go ahead and include you in on this one because maybe you weren't as crazy as I am in the first one. Maybe you're like me in this one. But oftentimes, I repeat it to people who've actually hurt me. Right? And so it's part of that relationship where I like to bring it up, right? not just once. And I do think God gives us permission to actually bring it up once, hey, you hurt me. Right? But after that, what do we do with that? And again, we're called to just forgive. We're called to keep no records of wrongs. What happens often is that we bring it up again and again and again and again and again. What's that called? Does anyone know the word for that? All right, hang on to that. See if you can come up with that as we talk through these verses. Proverbs 17, verse 9 says, Whoever covers an offense, or whoever puts a blanket over the offense, no one's thinking about it, no one's talking about it. Whoever does that seeks love. That's what Jesus taught us to do. Love our neighbors. But he who repeats a matter, he who brings it up again and again, remember what you did, remember what you did. Maybe not just remember what you did, but you did this, you did that. Right? Separates close friends, separates love. And that's, what God, that's not what God desires. Proverbs 27, verse 15 says this, a continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome wife are alike. Right? You can laugh at that if you want. A lot of people do. Right? But quarrelsome, another word for quarrelsome from the original language is, is what? Nagging. Nagging. Right? Just don't delete it from your mind to yourself and your relationship with yourself. Right? But delete it from your relationship with that person. Stop nagging. Stop bringing up past hurts. And I think a lot of us will say, I'm going to forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. Again, love keeps no records of wrongs, and I'll say this, and perhaps this is for a different sermon, but there, there's consequences to uh, behaviors, to sin, and it doesn't mean that we haven't forgiven the person. It doesn't mean we're not forgetting the person when there's consequences. I would say this as a dad. My oldest son just became a teenager, so pray uh, for my household. We now have a teenager. Um, but when we discipline our kids, does that mean we haven't forgiven them? Right? And when we discipline our kids, do I have to say, after they've suffered their, their punishment, right? okay, now I forgive you. Or do I wait for them to say, Dad, I'm sorry. Okay, now I'm going to forgive you. Right? Just because there's consequences doesn't mean there's not forgiveness, but in today's message, what we're talking about is not bringing it up, not being a nag with past hurts. Right? That we delete it from our mind, that we delete it from our relationship with the person that hurt us. And there's a third aspect that I find myself repeating it instead of deleting it, is we repeat it to others. Not just to our minds, not just to the person who hurt us, but we repeat it to others. And what's that called? There you go. Gossiping, right? And the scriptures say a lot about that. That's not how Jesus taught us how to live. In Proverbs 16, verse 28, a dishonest man spreads strife, right? And so lying is not a good thing. It's a different sermon. But a whisperer a whisperer separates close friends. In other translations, when they have instead of whisperer, a gossip. A gossip separates relationships. Right? And I would say this, if you're whispering about something, 95% of the time, right, you're gossiping. And many of you know as we began this sermon series, Truly He Taught Us, we said we're going to unpack the, these four core values within our team here at Trinity, our 90 plus staff members that we would learn more how to be patient with each other. This would be a place where we are patient with each other. This would be a place where we are gentle with each other. That this would be a place where we're compassionate that's next week for each other. And also this would be a place where we forgive each other. And I still find myself, and this might make Trinity look bad with our 90 plus staff, but there's every once in a while, every once in a while, when I walk through our office areas, cubicles or through the hallways where I hear people whispering or I see people whispering, what does that usually mean? It usually means that they act like they weren't even whispering, but they're, hey, Pastor Justin, how it's going? And it's like, guys, what are you doing? Right? Gossip. Right? Love keeps no records of wrongs. Don't repeat it. Delete it. Would you say that with me one time? Don't repeat it. Delete it. Right? Delete it in our relationship with our, ourself, which sounds kind of psychological, and it is. Right? God is the... the True, true source of psychology and he created our minds. He gets it, what we do and where the temptation is. Right? Don't repeat it to the person who hurt you and don't repeat it to others because that's not what love does. It's not how he taught us. Right? He taught us to delete it. And, and I'll say this, 
Right? Love doesn't forgive because people have earned it or because people deserve it. Right? Love doesn't forgive. We don't forgive because people have earned it or because people deserve it. Right? Love makes the first move. Love is not contingent. Right? And we know that's true because God is love. And right from the beginning we see what God does. Right? In creation, when Adam and Eve, when first man and woman walked away from God, when they sinned, right, what did God do? Did he wait for them to say, hey God, we're sorry. Please forgive us. No. Right? He came down and he said, where are you? And certainly he knew what they did and where they were, but he wants to be in a relationship with them. And so he comes seeking them. He makes that first move. And all throughout God's story revealed to us with creation and, and history, we see God continue to do that. Right? Mankind's walking away from him and he keeps walking towards them. And ultimately in Jesus, right, he makes that move to us. And people want a Savior, but they don't want a Savior from sin. They want a Savior from the tyranny of this world. Not the tyranny of themselves. But yet God says, no, I'm bringing Jesus. And you're going to name him Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins from their sins. And so Jesus comes in and says, here I am. And then what we hear is that it was while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He made that first move, not because we deserved it or earned it. Because that's what love does. That's what love does. And a question I would have for you is this, is do you think that he has a list? Do you think Jesus has a list of all the wrongs that you have done? Do you think he has a list of your lists that you carry around for other people? Right, Psalm 130, verse 3. Psalm 130, verse 3 says, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, perhaps a better translation from the original language would be, If you, O Lord, kept a record of wrong, right, if you, O Lord, kept a list, Right, oh Lord, who could stand? Who could stand? Right, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12 says this, God speaking, and he spoke this earlier on, uh, thousands of years earlier in the Old Testament, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. How is that? God seriously remembers our sins no more. God seriously has amnesia. Well, he's God, so God can do anything. And apparently this is true. He does not keep a record of our wrongs. Right? He remembers our sins no more. All right, 1 Corinthians 13, this great love passage. Right? Ultimately what that comes down to is, yes, that's for one another, but it begins with Jesus. And so when we look at 1 Corinthians 13, we can say Jesus is patient. Right? Jesus is kind. Right? Jesus always provides because he doesn't envy. Right? He's always happy for us. Jesus isn't rude. Jesus isn't selfish. Jesus isn't easily angered. And Jesus keeps no records of wrongs. Right? That's the truth of our faith. And that's what forgiveness is. Right? It keeps no records of wrongs. Forgiveness deletes it. And I love baptism, right, because it washes away our sin. Right? I love communion because we get to reconfirm what took place in our baptism. Right? He's washed away my sins. Right? Certainly we repent. Right? And that's a, another sermon for another day, how to repent, because that is so important for us if we want to love one another. Right? But certainly repentance is good. We've got to come to God. Be authentic with Him. Give that to Him. Right? And maybe today we're going to repent of our lists. God, take this list from me. Help me not to keep a record of wrongs. God, I want to bring this hurt again to the foot of your cross. And please heal me. Help me to forgive. Teach me how to forgive the way that you have forgiven me. Right, Ephesians 4.32. It's the verse of the week this past week and this week. It says, forgive one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. Right? Forgive one another as God and Christ has forgiven you. Right? Truly, he taught us how to love one another. And I would say this, the greatest miracle of all on this side of eternity 
is when the Holy Spirit of God does what only He can do, enables us to forgive somebody. To forgive somebody. So may God's Spirit come more into your life to enable this miracle to happen. And, and thank you, Jesus, for this example and, and for the miracle that you did for us on that cross when you forgave us our sins and you rose again from the dead, putting an explanation point on this truth that you do not remember our sins anymore. And so this is a moment where you and I get to come forward and confess our faith in Him. We needed a Savior. We needed to be forgiven from our sins and we still need Him today because we hold on and we remember. But God's calling us to delete. Jesus, the Scriptures tell us, on the night that He was betrayed, He was gathered with His closest disciples and He took bread 